I spoke to the minister a second time. Here's what happened. Johnson Boussigné, thank you for joining me again on Upfront. Thank you very much. I want to ask you about the sanctity of communication between Paul Rusesabagina and his attorneys. I want to play you some sound of what you said to your public relations advisors about this. What happened was that also, uh, let me also say that in most jurisdictions, uh, prisons insist on, 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 you know, finding out what is happening inside prisons, including what people have, what they are doing with it, and so on and so forth. So, including uh, legal documents. <laughs> Including legal documents. I think they, including the Mandela rules, including minimum standards of management of prisons, there are many rules that will allow you to know what's happening and what's going on in the, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, with people's, in people's documents. Two, there was a document, there was a particular document actually in one of the, the, the uh, one of those uh, activities carried out by the prison authorities. There was one particular document which actually suggested escape which came from a, a child of Mr. Zabagina all the way to him, suggesting that uh, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were being uh, engaged on a possibility of getting him to escape. Uh, that one was, was found by the prison authorities, and also, but it was also handed back to, to Mr. Zabagina. So, Mr. Businga, you said that documents that could be privileged are being intercepted and read by prison authorities. How can this be a fair trial if your government is reading the documents that could include Mr. Rusesabagina's defense strategy, for example? Uh, thank you very much. Let me clear this. Um, the, the Rwanda Correctional Services is an autonomous institution that is uh, uh, in, uh, charged with managing management of prisons. Secondly, it is in charge of safety and security of prisoners, of people who visit prisons, of everybody that is around the prisons, uh, uh, including the lawyers who come in, including uh, uh, workers and other uh, staffers who, who pass around. And prison security and safety is a, a, a function of the Rwanda Correctional Services, as I just said. Secondly, the sanctity of uh, defense, uh, communication between lawyers and their clients is protected by law. When anybody uh, uh, in the defense uh, uh, team of Richard Savagina visits him, when they talk to him, whenever they exchange uh, on, on their uh, documentation, that is privileged and that is protected. So we have two competing uh, 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 functions here. On the one hand, the correctional service uh, makes, makes sure there is safety and security for prisoners, and it does not have to uh, uh, you know, report on this, whatever they find, unless there is an element that requires them to report either in a criminal process, in a medical process, or in some other process. But Wait, the, so, the just, so, just, so that, just, just so that I'm clear, sir, the prison is under your purview. You, you, they operate under your purview, correct? The Ministry of Justice is the supervising ministry, yes. So you have all the information that the prison gets about those documents, including privileged ones, can be reported no. to you? No. So who, they, are, they, are not, they are not... Who are they reported to? Who, to? Sorry? So who, who would be the recipient no, of those they, reports? Well, they do their, they do their work about, their, about safety and security of the prison, and that is the, that's where they stop. That's, where they, the, that's the beginning, safety and security, and that's where they stop. They don't report to other institutions about what they find unless there is interest that requires other institutions' involvement, including, uh, as I said, it might be crime, it might be medical, it might be health, whatever it is. But they do not, uh, the law does not empower them to report what they find unless there is that kind of requirement. Why, why would a legal document need to be examined? Why would a private communication between a prisoner and their lawyer be a security concern? Well, in that case, it, it wouldn't have to be uh, a security concern, but w w once... Uh, let me ask you uh, another little uh, uh, hypothetical question. What if it was a, a, a complete escape? What if it was a, a truthful, concrete escape that was being planned? But what I'm saying is that... No, but, but, but the, I'm not asking the, about an escape. But, but I'm talking about legal communication between a prisoner and their lawyer. You specifically said legal documents. And in this case, if we see Mr. Rousseff McGinnis' Uh, legal communication between him and his attorney, how is that a security concern? 
I, I said the legal communication, the communication between lawyer and client is protected by law. And I, I, I want to imagine that uh, uh, because we have, as I told you yesterday, there is this legal process going on. I want to uh, uh, continue to be cautious about the, the, what pronouncements I make because I do not wish to be quoted on them and or probably be said to be influencing the court process. But I say that process, uh, uh, communication between lawyer and client is absolutely protected by law. Also, the Rwanda Correctional Services is in charge of safety and security of prisons, you know, across the country. Okay. It, 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 it was, it's just a bit confusing to me. Uh, yesterday, uh, I asked you, and you said pretty clearly that the sanctity of all of Mr. Rusesa Bagina's communications have been protected, yet on the tape, you very clearly say that legal documents have been examined. How do you account for the, the difference between what you said yesterday and what you're saying to me now? Um, what I say to you, I say legal documents, communication between lawyer and client is protected. And I repeat that. No, again. But, but, but you also said that you also said that they hadn't been read. Yesterday you said that they hadn't the sanctity hadn't been violated and that the government had didn't look at the documents. The prison is part of the government. You are a government official. The government has looked at his documents. Did you misspeak? Would you like to correct that? Well, let me say this. I, I, I also say that the correctional service, and I said it to you also, the correctional service is an autonomous institution. When you call it government, I don't understand exactly where you are, you are, you are heading to. It's not the correct thing to say that what they find, what they, uh, in their correctional services... Are you a government official, sir? Are you a government official? Yes, I am. And they report to you. You supervise them, right? Yeah, but the law empowers so, so them you're, to do certain things. You're a government official and you supervise the prison, but you're saying the prison isn't connected to the government? The prison's all How can it be autonomous well, if you re they report to you? I mean, if they're autonomous, that means the law gives them certain powers and what to do and what not to do and when. That's what I'm saying. And they're they not supposed to, to okay. communicate to me what, what they do in, in terms of uh, 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 the work they do for safety and security unless it requires any involvement of any other institution. All right. And when you looked at the, the communications of Mr. Rusesa Bagina and his attorney and found no security concerns, you then left it alone? Yes, of course. But you, so, but you looked at it. Yes, of course. They would. Right. But my point, but is the fact, my point is the fact that you looked at it is the problem. If, if, if the autonomous institution doesn't need anyone to look at it, if there's no problem, and yet you looked at it, then that suggests that he is being looked at when yesterday you told me they were not, sir. That's the only thing that I'm, that I'm not you, able to reconcile. Talking, excuse me. You are talking about you like uh, uh, this ministry. And I'm telling you that the correctional service is an autonomous institution. Okay. It does its job of safety and security. And once that is done, they do not have any power to divulge what they see or what they, even in packages. They get packages and have to inspect those packages. Un un understood. I, I, I understand you clearly, sir. Let's, let's move on. Uh, at the center of this story is the fact that Mr. Rusesa Begina ended up arrested in Rwanda after boarding a plane that he believed was bound for Burundi. Uh, how this happened has been somewhat of a mystery, uh, which I asked you about uh, earlier this week, but I want to play a clip of what you said to your advisors about this, which was, again, somewhat different. Let's look. Is it news that Rwanda paid for the plane? I've seen it suggested. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen a government person confirm that. And um, bits of hard information that you may be the first person to say, I would be cautious about that, because he's looking, he's looking for something that they could put out a press release about the interview or whatever. So mm -hmm. they'll be looking for nuggets of hard stuff. Um, but I think. So you the, thought I, I should have, for example, said I have no idea who paid. You do know who paid for the plane that transported Mr. Rusesa Bagina to Rwanda. The conversation you had with your advisors was what was rather not disclose it. Who did? Tell me who did. Yeah, but did, did I tell you yesterday that I don't know who paid? I'm, I'm asking who who paid? The government paid. So the government paid for the plane that transported him. Yesterday in our conversation, what you suggested to me, yeah. if I understand you correctly, was that the government didn't play a role in transport in getting him here, right? The... Yeah, I told you, listen to me, I, I told you that there is a, a person who was operating with Richard Savagina for a long time, 
who was an interest of our public uh, investigation, criminal investigation department, who accepted to turn him in, and the payment was to facilitate the transportation of uh, that man, but of, of, it was to facilitate the, the, the plan of this man to transport Ruset Sabagina to Rwanda. The government did not uh, play a role in transporting him. It was facilitating this gentleman who wanted to, to bring him to Rwanda. So essentially, the government paid for someone else to trick Mr. Ruset Sabagina to come into Rwanda? Yes. And you acknowledge that Mr. Ruset Sabagina did not know that he was coming into Rwanda. He was tricked, and you're saying the government did not organize the plan. They simply paid for the plane that got him there. Well, he was he was he was he was uh, brought into Rwanda by someone who was who lured him to come to Rwanda, who knew exactly what was going on uh, on his way. Of course, if he hadn't come here, he was on his way to Burundi, uh, but he was he was transported to Rwanda by that gentleman, and Rusesa Bagine himself is aware. On a plane that the government paid for. So, in light of that, now that you've had a moment to reflect on this, the government paid for a plane that led to uh, the transport of someone without their knowing and certainly against their will into a country that they're not citizens of for the purpose of a, of a, of a legal proceeding. Can you see how that would be seen as an illegal extradition process? One, uh, let me let me say uh, that one of the things that we I, I, I intend not to go deeply into is this matter because it is a matter for the court. And as I told you yesterday, I, I want to be cautious about what I'm doing, uh, what I say as attorney general, because uh, it might become uh, uh, you know interpreted as influencing the court process. But let me tell you that the, the, in international uh, criminal law. Uh, luring people into places where they can be brought to justice has happened and has happened in many other jurisdictions. Is it legal? Yes, it is. So you're saying that this does not violate uh, the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from in in Enforced Disappearance. You're saying that this does not uh, this does not violate the uh, the conventions against torture, cruel and human, or degrading treatment or punishment. You're saying no international law has been violated in what happened of getting Mr. Rusesa Begina from uh, Dubai into into Rwanda. Is that is that your position? I wouldn't I wouldn't want to make conclusions in that direction because I, again, as I told you, I don't want to be quoted as interfering in a court process.